Moreno, a former Department of Justice prosecutor. Uh, Phil, first to you. The president, as we just heard from Abby there, trying to walk back what he said this week, that he had no problem uh, taking dirt on opponents from a foreign source. And in this interview with Fox today, he said, of course, you have to report it to the FBI. So same question to you. How do you think he's cleaning this up? Not that well. This is not very complicated. It's not about opposition research. I used to be in the spy business. If you go into a campaign in 2020 and you have, we saw this in Helsinki, a foreign government that favors a candidate. In Helsinki, Putin says, I favor the president. And you have a foreign government, let's say Russia or China, who favors a candidate. They might have an interest based on what the president said in the past couple days to steal your financial data. Maybe your credit cards aren't paid right. to steal your emails. Maybe there's embarrassing information in there about an inappropriate relationship you have. That's what we call espionage. It's not on the candidates to vet that information. They need to place a phone call. There's no question. That's espionage. And, and, and Joe, the president is saying that before he places that phone call that Phil was just talking about, that he'd have to look at in, that information to determine whether it's bad or not. Is that the way the law works? No, obviously not. That's absolute nonsense. I think President, like, President Trump likes to exude this, this idea that he is the man, right? That he gets to decide what laws he does and does not adhere to. And so for him to say, I'm going to filter information, then I'll decide if I notify the Attorney General or the FBI, it's absolutely absurd. That's not up to him. It is not. All right. Well, the president has also repeatedly uh, tried to insinuate that the rules are different for him because he's the president. Let's take a listen. One thing that's different with the president, I had dinner with the queen. I, had, I met with the prime minister of the U.K. I was with the head of France. I was the, with the head of all these nations, and I constantly am, constantly talking to them. And, you know, that puts us in a dip. We, we have many, many conversations. And I'm just thinking, gee, if they say, uh, we don't like your opponent, uh, am I supposed to put, you know, the president of France, am I supposed to report him to the FBI? <laughs> Phil, imagine that, uh, Queen Elizabeth II at that state dinner slipping uh, opposition research uh, dirt across the table there. But, but more realistically, one of the examples that he gave, gave was François Macron uh, uh, of France. Can you imagine any uh, governments that we are close to engaging in this kind of behavior? I can't. I mean, I used to meet foreign government officials every day. The president has to, doesn't have to do this. I used to have to fill out a form, which half the time I didn't do. Fine, I violated a rule. But, but there's a fundamental difference, obviously. And let's make sure. I mean, this is funny, but not. Let's make sure we understand it. You have dinner with a foreign official and say, what should our policy be in Iran? That's what the president is talking about. Dinner with the queen, for example, or lunch with the queen. You have a, a meeting with a foreign official, in, in, in Don Jr.'s case, a Russian lawyer who's offering dirt, presumably stolen information about American candidate. This is apples and oranges, and the, and the president's trying to, uh, trying to suggest to us that an apple is like an orange. It's not. They're different. And Julie, the, the president also turning his sights, as he so often does, on, on the Speaker of, House, uh, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. He called her comments fascist and disgraceful, which seems uh, farther than he, he really has gone in the past. Uh, Pelosi, of course, saying that uh, Trump doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. So who's goading who here and, and who's coming out on top? Well, I think they're both goading each other, uh, but I would, I would say that it seems like Nancy Pelosi really has gotten under President Trump's skin, and we've seen this happen time and again. She made a comment last night uh, during an interview that, you know, he does a lot of projecting. So it's interesting he used the word fascist. She said, you know, when, when he says Nancy's nervous, that means he's nervous. When, she's, when he says Nancy's a mess, that means he's a, a mess. That's her way of trying to sort of throw it back on him. But I think what you're seeing here is a president who feels very threatened by the speaker um, and a speaker who's trying to sort of hold off a, a, a group of Democrats in the Democratic caucus on Capitol Hill who are really calling for much more aggressive action against President Trump, potentially opening a, an impeachment inquiry. Um, but one of the ways she's doing that is by trying to show solidarity by making these increasingly critical comments about him, that he, uh, you know, she made a private comment that he belongs in prison last week. She made this, these other comments about uh, him not knowing right from wrong. It's pretty clear she and the president are going to continue to be engaging in this kind of war of words against each other. And, and someone who is certainly not uh, leveling any sort of criticism at the president is uh, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. He was asked uh, about this question on uh, dirt from foreign uh, sources. Uh, he responded that Democrats just can't let it go, repeating this line that after the Mueller probe that the case is closed. Do you think we should be surprised that he wasn't willing to engage more on that? 
Not at all. I mean, Mitch McConnell has been, you know, in, in the, the exact same position, I think, throughout all of this, saying that, you know, the Mueller report, it's case closed now that we know what, what now that it's out uh, and that we need to move on. And we really didn't hear a whole lot of criticism from Republicans of the president's conduct. It was interesting yesterday after his comments about uh, accepting, you know, foreign campaign dirt um, that many of them said, OK, we part ways with him on that. We would call the FBI, but they didn't criticize the president for having said it, uh, none of them really, really uh, voiced any concern about whether that might have opened the door or been a dangerous thing in terms of inviting uh, that kind of foreign interference in the coming or the current election cycle. So uh, Republicans are willing to go up to a line in terms of breaking with the president, but they don't want to be critical of him. And certainly Mitch McConnell is not going to be in that situation. All right. All right. Well, this was all sparked because of this interview uh, that, the, that the president gave to ABC News. And in a new clip that was rolled out today, we also heard President Trump talking about uh, his former White House counsel, Don McGahn. And he responded to the lines in the Mueller report that McGahn stopped Trump multiple times from firing Robert Mueller. Take a listen. I was never going to fire Mueller. I never suggested firing Mueller. That's Do not I what think? He says. Excuse I don't care what he says. It doesn't matter. That was to show everyone what a good counsel he was. But why would Don but McGahn we had a lie? Business why would he lie under oath? To, why would he because lie under Because he oath wanted to, to make Mueller. himself look like a good lawyer. Or, or he believed it because I would constantly tell anybody that would listen, including you, including the media, that Robert Mueller was conflicted. Joe, what do you think of that? Was McGahn lying to make himself look good? That doesn't make sense at all. No. And, and this is so interesting because normally when you have a client who's you know, under investigation, or in this case possible impeachment, you want to move things past. You want to do what the Republicans in the Senate are doing and saying, case closed, let's move it behind us. The president seems to just relish in, keeping to, in bringing this up. And not only that, Don McGahn holds a really vital position in terms of what he knows. So for the president, of all people, to be calling him out and effectively calling him a liar, terrible strategy. I mean, any defense counsel would go crazy if their client was doing this sort of thing. So, Phil, if he thinks that Don McGahn lied, yeah. why doesn't he let him testify? Why are they they're putting pressure on him to not respond to these subpoenas to testify in front of Congress? Well, I can't figure this out because if I'm sitting there, Don McGahn, you keep hearing this phrase, executive privilege, I want to prevent people from testifying. You know, I'm a private citizen. Now, I left government years ago. Don McGahn is a private citizen. If the, if the CIA told me I couldn't testify, if the White House tells Don McGahn he can't testify, if I were him, I'd say, you just impugned my integrity. That's really important for my legal practice. I have to sit face to face with a client and say, I will uh, represent you honorably. The president is almost putting the ball in the tee for McGahn to say, I have no option but to defend my honor. I think McGahn's going to appear publicly at some point. It won't go well for the president. We have yet to hear from McGahn. Phil Mudd, Julie Hirschfeld Davis, Joe Moreno, thanks very much.